So, what's the plan? We go inside and calmly ask Eddie why he was there that day. All right. Calmly. Let's try to let him get his side of the story out, okay? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I understand, Mr. Barrow. I'll be sure to let him know. Yes, I have it all written down. Have a good day, Mr. Barrow. Hello. Good morning, Missy. How do you get stuck working reception? Rose called in sick this morning. I'm covering for her while I try to get my paperwork done. What are you doing here? Just checking in with Uncle Eddie. I'm guessing from the identical features that this is Tyler? Tyler, Denise, Denise, Tyler. Hi. Wilson, could you tell Officer Vincenzi that I'll be- Oh, good morning, Allison. Hi, Uncle. I'm gonna take Dr. Torres' statement. No need for Vincenzi to come back to the station. He doesn't seem like he's in the best of moods. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but he's been a little off all day. Good luck. That sounds great. Great. He has an excuse to brush us off. I'm sure he'll make time if we say it's important. Maybe he's not feeling well because of something related to us. Oh. Hello, kids. Hello, middle-aged adult. Everything all right? Your uncle said you two were going to be knee-deep in trash for a few days. A few days? That's optimistic. It feels like every time we clear out a drawer, two more just appear out of thin air. Huh. Yes. You got my sympathies. When we emptied Linda's parents' house, oof. I thought we'd have to rent a backhoe. How is Linda? I feel like I haven't seen her in months. Good. Yeah, she started working over at the high school as the librarian. Pay's not great, but she gets to see the kids every day, so... I bet Brendan's thrilled. Oh, yeah. Happy as any teenager who's got to spend extra time with his mom. <laughs> well, I'll let you work. Eh, no worries. You're not a bother. People are just strolling in here. Dr. Torres, you said your daughter was with you during the incident? Yes, she was. I'll need her information too then. Can you give me her name and date of birth? Okay. Isabella Henderson, July 16th, 2009. Henderson. Different last name? Yes. Is he interrogating someone in wide My open public view? Does she live with you most of the time? No, her father has primary custody because of my hours. She stays with me on the weekends. So I got your note. I'm sorry I forgot your birthday. I got so wrapped up with Tyler coming that it totally slipped my mind. I'll make it up to you, I promise. I haven't talked to anybody yet. This whole time, it's been Allison talking. Okay. I think I gotta get into the habit of opening this to make sure what we don't do until the end. Hello, D. All right. Incident report states you called yesterday hey. at 6.13 a.m. Hey, speaks. Because How's Delos treating you so far? Officer Vincenzi was dispatched to your home at 6.29 a.m. It's been good to see Allison. <laughs> she's been talking nonstop about you lately. I know she's happy to have you here. Hey, been meaning to say, Allison showed us that article you wrote for the Juno Daily last year. That's right. You were spot on. The state needs to be giving way more money to youth centers. Fireweed was lucky to have you. I'm a surgical resident at one of the only hospitals in southeast Alaska. Thanks. I spent a lot of time fighting for more outdoor activities. Made some enemies in the administration over that one. But the first time those kids summoned Mount Roberts, man, they were so proud. It felt great. I know exactly what you mean. I um, volunteer sometimes with the JCE. You give lectures about police work, lead group talks when I can. I know. I know. I read your emails. <laughs> <laughs> JCE? You know, Juno Coalition for Equality. Oh. Oh. Wait, really? That's awesome. Yeah, and I don't mean to preach, but the kids in those groups, be it Fireweed or the JCE, they need people who really understand them. People who know where they're coming from and will fight for what they need. Anyways, sorry for the rant. Could you go through the- Not at all. It seems like we have something in common. Dr. Torres. Oh, Tyler, you ready? I woke up. I I'm guessing that interrogation is not too important. Isabella's father was coming over to pick her up at uh, Chief Brown's taking a statement, but so you might be able to snag him when he's done. I made breakfast. 
Sorry, Tyler. Duty calls. I realized I hadn't grabbed the mail the night before. Isabella asked to come with me, so I helped her into To serve and protect is where we start. Our mission is to earn your trust. Still quite dark, but He's taking a statement from a doctor, so Someone something happened last night. Something was going through our mailbox. My oh, the mailbox bandit. Yeah, yeah. Around her size. She Who designed this building? MC Escher? Leia is totally bizarre. A it's okay. Mm, that's what she said. A little kid wearing stripes. What about you? Are you sure you Good morning, see? Justin Beaver. I... No. I'm sorry. Did you need something, Allison? Uh, yeah. Tyler? Uh, can you come here? No. No. How much can I get away with just looking around? Oh boy, fire drills. Everybody's favorite way to slack off. Hey, is that your desk? Huh? Sorry. I didn't think so. Move on. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Where's Isabella now? At school. She's back at her father's house for the week. Could I get Mr. Henderson's information from you? I think it'd be helpful if I could talk to Isabella. Yeah, they're yes, still busy. Of course. Ooh, do we have some kind of a sports team? Basketball? It's a small town. It seems like everybody's really tight here. There's not that many employees. Chief Brown is pretty much head honcho. Yeah. Good thing we put back the key, huh? Ooh. Otherwise, D might have been. You ready? I don't think we can go up here in the morning. Hey, we don't need anything up there. Come on. Yeah, they were talking about this. Somebody's stuff got stolen from their mailbox. We need the kind of mailboxes where it's like a slit in the door. They just throw stuff in the house. So people can't come in and get it. How about that? Obviously it doesn't work for bigger packages, but hey. Chief Brown? Tyler? You ready? I mean, this whole situation is kind of messed up to begin with because... They're twins. But the adoptive father only adopted one of them. That in itself is... Uh. I really have a lot on my plate. We'll catch up later, though. Oh, sorry. Sorry, D. Uh, Chief Brown's taking a statement, but you oh, might be okay. able to snag him when he's done. Hello, Chief Brown. Oh, this is your desk? Or are you just using this? Morning, Chief Brown. Good morning, Tyler. Hey, could we talk to you in private? It's a little urgent. Can you excuse me for a second, Dr. Torres? <sighs> What's going on, you two? We had a few more questions about our mother. Look, now's not the best time. Well, maybe we can come back later then? Excuse me. Come on. He's not in a good mood. Guys, I'm understaffed today. I've got a receptionist out sick, an officer dealing with personal issues. I need to finish taking this woman's statement and I don't have time to chat right now. We were just hoping for some answers. Well, I don't know what more you think I'm going to say. I already told you everything. I need to get back to this complaint. Sorry, guys. Brushing us off. Oh, I hate when he's stubborn like that. So what now? <laughs> Of course, Ms. We Ford. sneak up into the archives. Where were we? Yeah, of course we're... Yeah, we're not leaving. Well, he's obviously not going to give us the truth. So I say we go get it ourselves. Where do you think they'd stash her file? I don't know. The archive room? Maybe Eddie's office? Wait, you're not seriously thinking of breaking and entering a police archive? Go big or go home. 
He mentioned that he's understaffed today because an officer has personal issues. Is it the guy here? I forgot his name, but he's not here today. Yeah. Or maybe it's this one. We don't know that person. Um, are we allowed to just... Hey, what are you two up to over there? Everything alright? Uh, yeah, everything's fine. We're just, uh... I was just telling Tyler where the upstairs bathroom is. Tyler, help me out here. Oh, uh, yeah. Toilet emergency. Lake water. You know, Mother Nature's juice cleanse. There's a bathroom just past the break room. Behind you. First door on your right. Forget it, Tyler. There's no way we're getting upstairs out in the open like this. It's too suspicious. There must be another way up. Climb outside. Ah. Oh. Maybe we can check out that map of the building near reception. Oh my god. Why didn't I think of that? Lobby. Now. Good plan, guys. Alright. Let's see. There. Fire exit. It opens up to a staircase on the side of the building, but it'll definitely be locked from the inside. If one of us were to create a diversion, the other could slip upstairs and open the door. And since you're the troublemaker, I nominate you as the one to make a scene. Wait, really? Got a better idea? Fine with that. Oh, but I gotta be an actor. Uh... Aren't cops, like, trained to notice suspicious behavior? I'm not exactly an amazing actor. Figure out something simple and commit. I have faith in you. Okay, if you say so, sis. Oh boy. Um, spill some stuff on your shirt. Spill coffee. Um, that's a really... Do we have another option? Allison is just on standby there. <laughs> oh, they have so many security cameras though. Oh god, this isn't gonna work. But okay. We gotta do what we gotta do. How about saying someone's climbing the fence? Really? I can pretend they're outside, trying to break in. Uh, alright. Uh, let me look at all the options first. If they go outside, and they don't find anybody climbing the fence, it's gonna be too suspicious. Guess I probably can't trip the circuit breaker, but I could turn the lights off. Just go. Improvise. What are you gonna do after you turn the lights off? The computers are still gonna be on. It's not gonna be a blackout. Oh my goodness. This is nerve-wracking. That pile of paperwork? What about it? I could tip it over. Kinda messy, but I mean... Sure. This seems simple. I like that one the most so far, just because, you know, simple works best. Keep it simple, stupid. Okay, well, uh, I see three options. Why don't we commit to one of them? The fence one? Okay, the light one I like the least, because this one... What on earth are you gonna do afterwards? Be like, whoops, and uh, we'll get it over with. Alrighty. Jesus, Tyler, what happened? Sorry, I wasn't looking where I was going. Just... Leave that there. He just said leave that there and you- Okay. <laughs> Easy peasy. Alright. I'm in position. What now? Turn right when you exit the station and follow the side of the building. The staircase will be right there. Turn right. Ah, this reminds me a bit of- Breaking into Blackwell is Max. You head now? I- you don't smoke, do you? Duh. Oh, okay. 
uh, yeah. Gotta get going. Where's Allison? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Bathroom. I'm, uh, gonna wait for her outside. All right. See you around. Later. Yeah, that was normal. That was a normal conversation. That wasn't suspicious. <sighs> There's winter air. Okay. I'm by the door. Come on. Happy 4th of July, be safe, not sorry. Fireworks are illegal. Even on 4th of July? Eh, where I live, fireworks are illegal only on October 31st. I think they just changed it this year though, so maybe it's not legal anymore. So that mailbox bandit struck again, huh? Apparently so. Recently, we've had multiple incidents of mail theft occurring in and around Delos Crossing. Residents have reported letters and packages stolen from mailboxes, particularly in the East Point and Almeda sections. Mm hmm. Increase awareness, consider locking mailboxes. Yeah. Whoa, well, we even have a hashtag. They're in. Okay, I'm just gonna have a look around. You never know. Maybe we can find a tool somewhere. Bears! Don't feed the bears. That story that we read before? Hibernating bears. Sam losing his cave. I'm not sure what that would be a reference to. Hey, which one's Brown's car? Why? <laughs> you can tell a lot about someone by the car they drive. Ah, the love language of car people. So which one is it? Hey, which one's Brown's car? Why? I was thinking of letting a little air out of his tires. You know, in case we need to make a break for it. Ha ha. In the end, you're still not gonna tell me which one it is. Fine, 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 fine. Staircase should be on the other side of the building. Okie dokie. Maybe it's this piece of trash. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not a piece of trash. Don't hate me, car people. <laughs> uh, is that supposed to be Greg's? Oh, yeah. Well, no one knows for sure, but the resemblance is uncanny. Who's the artist? Cold case. Stay out of trouble. Is that red warehouse part of the whole chicken farm business? You know it. It's a shooting range now. Uh. Oh, wow. Just looking around. Hang on, Allison. I'll be right with you. Fire exit's right behind me. Okay. Alrighty then. What's the consequences if we get found out? Can we just be like, whoops, I didn't know where I was going, sorry, didn't mean to... Didn't mean to do this. Can we get away with that? Oh, crap. Shit, where are you? Right here, open the door. You took control of your destiny, own it. We're in. If D sees me, this is gonna be really bad. Cause she saw me walk outside. Hey. So, which one do we want to go in first? Eddie's office? Okay, let's go to archives. I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but maybe there's something in Eddie's office. Yeah, but maybe there's something I can't here. I believe I'm gonna say this, but maybe there's something in Eddie's office. How old is Brown? 38. Oh, wow. Graduated really young. Youngest officer to ever join the DCPD. If Eddie catches us in here... There's no turning back now. Oh... This guy's an elite. <sighs> Personnel files... Department budgets, but zero case files. 
Well, it's confidential, right? He shouldn't be leaving it out lying in the open. Looks like this is where Brown keeps all his personal mail. It's a 10-year-old case. The file shouldn't be out here anyway. Why is Brown on a first-name basis with the director of Fireweed? Oh. What'd you find? It's an invoice. Eddie Brown, you'll find it and close the final invoice for resident Tyler Ronan. Oh. The Fireweed administration would like to thank you for all of the support you've given us over the years. I knew Eddie pulled some strings to send you there, but... <laughs> That's a lot of money. More back doors and secret moves. Maybe he didn't want to make you uncomfortable. Well, now I feel like I'm in his debt. Damn, on the front, he wasn't really that receptive to Tyler, but that's $3,000 for this time. For this time, how many times has he paid this? Oh my god. Common charges, 300. Student health insurance, 700. Housing fees, 1800. Meal plan, 400. Anticipated aid. I got a grant of 800. Oh, wow. Are you sure you checked all the emails? Looks like he's working with the Office of Child Services on the case. None of our business. Okay. You applied to a summer drama program back in 2009? I did, but they rejected me. Michael what? and I were supposed to go together. He went, but I was stuck here for the summer with no one but Justin Beaver for company. Oh no. Why? Well, uh, this letter says you got in. What the hell? So he just turned it down? I'm sorry, Allison. Shouldn't be surprised he's lied to me in the past. Ah, this is a very interesting pile of emails. One email improving Tyler's impression of Eddie. One email negatively affecting Allison's impression of Eddie. Ooh. Damn. He didn't tell her. He let her apply. But he didn't want to let her go. The people who stay in these small towns. He doesn't want to let her go. You finding anything? No. But is he okay with her moving to Juno? Or maybe there's just nothing he can do about it. Brown really wants everyone to know what a fine, upstanding citizen he is, doesn't he? He's a genuinely good person. And saying that here makes me feel even worse. How can you still say that after finding out he rejected your offer? Everyone's got... Oh my god. Mm. He's the kind of person who's concerned with looking like a good person to everyone, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, being a good person... Mm. Showing yourself as a good person sounds really fake, but I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Like, these are just... People are multifaceted. The end. The police chief of Delos Crossing hosts charity events? Huh? Oh, yeah. The community social. He volunteered to help, and since he pretty much knows everyone, and more importantly, who's called the cops on who, he's in charge of the seating chart. Hey Eddie, you will find enclosed your invitation for the annual social. As usual, I've included a plus one on the chance that one day you'll use it. Cheers, Elliot. Eddie doesn't have a partner right now? Honor our elders, community social. 34th Annual Dinner and Dance Honoring All Elders and Our Community's Tlingit Cultural Legacy. Are you sure you checked all the emails? Hmm. Let's put the Vekis next to... Can you not? <laughs> he's doing this at work? Kinda seems like he's using government dime to do random stuff. Hey, that's mine now. Huh. Hey, you. You're just gonna take it? You're just gonna take it? That's okay? It's not! Allison, stop him! The stalwart moose is a kind and loyal animal. 
He always criticizes the goblins for their tricks, but he actually likes them. Oh, I don't think he's a bad person, but everybody... I think doing something bad and being a bad person... Well, it might be a little bit different. He definitely did something bad by rejecting that offer. Not by rejecting it, but by not showing Allison the offer, but... Uh... He's done so much good in other ways, too. Though we are destined to burn, we emerge as stardust. Is that...? Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, yes. Burn it. Burn it with fire. What? What is it? Floating amid the Perseids, I search for you, my Al Wade. In the dragon's head, I roam alone, while the other stars burn into my zone. But they cannot be observed, for I see only you, and push the others out of my milky way into another galaxy, and remove the gradients to better view your radiance, and though we are destined to burn, we emerge as stardust and make the universe anew. And there is only me and only you. Oh! I was wondering where he was seeing this. Are you sure you checked all the emails? The line! The line! There's words on the line. Oh my god. How romantic. Why is he... I don't want to know. Oh, he's only got a photo of Allison on the desk. Huh, the Dallas police force is getting a new officer. Finally. This guy has a record, and not a short one. Why is he even in the running? Shh, Eddie has a really hard time hiring people out here. I don't think he has a choice. There's always a choice. Oh my god, but people with criminal records can become police? Criminal slash traffic, whatever that means. Donald Mert. Armed robbery, misdemeanor, guilty, six months bureau of prison, one year supervised release. And then flight to avoid prosecution slash giving testimony. And then drug paraphernalia, possess slash use. Three different things. Robbing people, running away. Are you sure you checked all the emails? And drugs. Well, it's not like he's a murderer, but still, those are not small things. He might work. Are you kidding me? Oh, this is his resume. Wow, this is... <laughs> this is a very... beautiful resume. He's got his phone number. Yeah, work history. U.S. Army military. Private first class. 2001 to 5. Responsibilities. Accountable for actions of team. Assisted in training subordinates. Equipment maintenance. Are you sure you checked all the emails? Hey, small tip for writing resumes. When you want to do bullet points, start it with a verb, and then try to add concrete numbers. Like, increase efficiency of my team by 20% by doing this and that and that. That's usually the most solid way to write your resume. Sandwich artist! From 1999 to 2000. And then he went to the military. And then he... was robbing people. Yeah, he went to high school and then got a diploma. Are you sure you checked all the emails? So he quit the military 10 years ago. 2005. 2005? 2005? That can't be related to us, right? Yeah, so this guy was honorably discharged from the military in 2012. Okay. But then, somehow his life went down the drain and he started stealing. Hmm, is the government not giving proper support to veterans or something? Are you sure you checked all the emails? Nacho Mama! <laughs> Wait. Here. Somebody to the officers, Nacho Mama. People, we are all adults here. Whoever keeps leaving dirty dishes in the sink better learn to clean after themselves, or I will personally stuff said culprit into the washer so they can see how it works. Sincerely, Maria Ol Olivar. Olivar? 
Greg's. Man, who pissed in her cereal this morning? <laughs> you have reply all, Sherlock. APCC, City Council event reminder. We would like to remind you of your upcoming council meeting at the Juno City Council event room. E. Brown, implicit bias training. Good morning, everyone. From Eddie to everybody in the police station. Please remember your presence is required Wednesday, November 11th at 1 o'clock. I need us all there, so speak now if you can't attend, and I'll reschedule. As I said this morning, we'll be talking about implicit bias. This is not punishment. It has nothing to do with the dismissal of Randy Spears. We can all benefit from this discussion, no matter who we are. I've attached some reading material. We'll be discussing, and I'm available if there's any questions. Chief Eddie Brown. Huh. Tom invited Eddie over for dinner? Oh, yeah. Uh, he's been trying way too hard to get Eddie's endorsement. Does he? Support Tom? He preferred staying neutral. We don't know the other candidates. Dinner? Good morning, Chief. Tessa and I would love to have you over for dinner on Thursday night. And I know you can't say no to a roasted salmon. I didn't catch it myself, but it's this morning's catch. Looking forward to seeing you. Veni Vidi Vecchi. Whoa. Brown looked at our file this morning. Wait, what? What does that mean? I don't, I don't know, but there's a reference number, R68653. Hi Chief, regarding your request this morning about the Ronin case, it hasn't been digitized yet, so you can find the paper originals in the archives for other references about the case. Transcripts of phone calls have been taken out, but you can find the digitized calls through the appendix. Let me know if you need anything else. Thomas Arbor. Ah, that could explain why he's in a bad mood. Should I write this down? I don't know when they're going to suddenly quiz me. Let's do it just in case. Six, eight, six, five, three. One of his emails mentioned the archives. That's got to be where our file is. Well, let's go then. Quick sweep. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we want to put a bit more focus on Allison's offer being rejected. But not right now. Not right now. Later. Because that's a really crappy thing that he did. Oh, how are we going to get in? And there's a there's a security camera. There's a bathroom. I guess we should look up that reference in the archives. Please tell me you know what the code is. To the highly confidential police archive? Then how am I supposed to open the door? I spent hours playing next to this room. I'd see people go inside all the time. The keypad does this little tune. Dum da dee do. <laughs> Dum da dee do. Go on, try. Well, I see some of them are rubbed off. Dum da dee do. Oh, da. Do. No. Start again. How did that tune go again? Dum da dee do. That doesn't sound like a dumb. Oops. No. How did that tune go again? Dum da dee do. Six. Zero. Four. One. Yes. What about the cameras, guys? Uh, looks like they're finally going digital. Oh, that's right. I remember Eddie complaining about this. They're gonna have to resort everything. Great. They've digitized their closed files, but only the ones before 1990. Meaning? Meaning our file is still somewhere in those boxes. Perfect. A room of scattered case files and a half ton sorting system. Yep. This is gonna be so fun for you. I'm gonna go keep a lookout. What? Why do I have to be the one stuck with box duty? 
Because if anyone sees me, I'll have a better excuse for being there. Reach out if you need anything. That's true. R six eight six five three. Look it up. Look it up, she says. Okay. Shouldn't they be digitizing from most recent to earliest? What is this? Oh. Oh, it's the guidelines for scanning the stuff. And storage formats and all that. Close files up to 1990 have been done. Okay. Yeah. We don't need to read this. That is confidential or something. Dude, there's a freaking security camera right here. Oh my god. There's no way we're not going to be found out. No, 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 we want 2004. Not this one either. Uh, no, that's not it. Just press on all of them. Yeah, there's a lot of boxes. Nope. Well? Huh. What was that reference number again? 05R68653. There was a 05 in the front? Over the year. 05 Not this one either. We have to find one that starts with 05 to begin with, right? Oh. Here we go. Looks like a step-by-step -step record of the investigation. Okay, May or uh, March 1st, 2235. Notified by my partner officer, Christian Holt, of accident at 12 Cannery Road, Delos Crossing, 8K77477. White female identified as Marianne Ronan, falling over deck into the lake. Audio recorded, tape, blah and blah, brown. 2258. Holt and I arrive at the scene. So that's like 30 minutes later, roughly. Briefed by patrol officer Jay Chan of incident. And then about 10 minutes later, located witnesses, minor's name redacted, Ronin, and minor's name redacted, Ronin. Born March 7. Oh my god, that happened like a week before our birthdays. 94. Children of Mary Ann Ronin couldn't get a statement from them as they were under dire stress and shock. The children were taken under care of patrol officer Jay Chan. 23.41 That's... another half hour later? Coroner investigator T. Dickens arrived at scene. Rolled prints of victim, crime lab tech O'Tully at scene. Completed photographs of scene and recovered an unlicensed Rassler 3121 shotgun. Bullets recovered from location. Barn. Okay, that means the gun has been shot. The gun was shot in the barn before the whole chase sequence happened. I feel like if they were really doing their job, then they would have figured out that Allison's the one who did it because children can't lie that well. Well? So far, I'm not seeing anything we didn't know already. It does reference some other files and audio recordings though. You might be able to look those up on the computer. Even if our file hasn't been digitized yet, they may already have it in the appendix. Oh, so I should keep it? Hold on. That is, uh, I'm just gonna take a picture of this. Hold on. I didn't know there was already a shot in the barn. So that's new to me. March 2nd, 0023. Coroner took possession of body, cleared scene. And then half an hour later, interviewed children at station. Stated that after Tyler Ronan's hair was cut short by sister Allison Ronan, Marianne Ronan threatened Tyler Ronan with a gun. When Tyler Ronan fled from her, she pursued child to the docks. Well, actually, it would say Ollie, but I'm gonna say Tyler for convenience. Tyler Ronan stabbed M.A. Ronan, who was still threatening the child before falling over into the water. Witnesses state they called 911 shortly after. And then in the morning, canvas crime scene, 
did not recover pair of scissors claimed by Tyler Ronan. Mm -hmm. Two days later, presented the case to DA District Attorney B. Cruz, charged Tyler Ronan with homicide. Homicide? Really? Not self-defense or anything like that? Homicide. Straight out homicide. He was 10. Alright, I'm in. You can search by keywords. What should I look for? I don't know. Mary Ann Ronan? March 1st, 2005? Crime report. Oh. Oh. Oh, now we have a number. 24-hour homicide report. Victim information and crime summary. 05 61889. 61889. And this one. 62766. This is on Marianne Ronan. Information and rap sheet. 6189. 6189. References 05 R62 766. You want the other one first? No, that's not it. Are you finding anything? Uh. 05 R62 766. Some of them are rubbed off though, so we can't see it completely. Oh, this is a really cool investigation section. I really like what they did with the computer there. Nope. <sighs> Not this one either. Uh, where's the damn box? Just click a whole bunch no. of them. 05 R62 766. 62! Where's 62? It should be here, right? But it's not. No, that's not it. Nope. Are you finding anything? <laughs> Just click a whole bunch of them. Just give me a minute. It's a mess in here. Come on, we need to hurry. R62! Why is it not here? Oh, please don't tell me it's this. Of course! He was looking at it already! I have her autopsy report. Okay. She... Yeah. What is it? She drowned. Stab wound was non-fatal. What? Yeah. Um, I never thought the... the stab wound was it. Assault. Scissors by daughter. Um... Bloody froth seen in mouth and nose. Cerebral edema. Waterlogged lungs. See pulmonary edema and emphysema aqu aquosum, distended stomach, two degrees to fluid content. Three inch clean stab wound, appears antemortem, before death. CT, fluid and paranasal sinuses, trachea, bilateral pleural effusions. Blood work, fresh water inhalation. Other conditions, but not related to the cause of death. Homicide. If any other natural causes, how did injury occur? With scissors, victim then fell over dock into freezing lake water. No operation performed. Technician as Silva. Wait, what? No, no operation. 15 centimeter stab wound. That's a big wound. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Body tag, clothing, x-ray, medical record, specimens collected, heart blood, femoral blood, urine, storage jars, toxicological analysis ordered, screen, alcohol, carbon monoxide, neogen screen, analysis positive. So she was drinking? Is that what it's saying? This is... they put a lot of effort into this form. I like it. Okay. Oh, now we have more. This is what we saw already. Oh, this is the first one. That's why we were looking for the... Ronan sentence in court order. 
I don't know if we're actually being timed right now, so I'm just gonna try to go fast. Okay. I need to check out 05R63325. <sighs> Not this one either. There. I don't think we're being timed, but it makes sense that we would be rushing right now, right? Well, that's a picture I definitely don't want to keep. Order for temporary detention or placement in the Superior Court for the state of Alaska. Tyler Ronan, minor. Date of birth, hearing held on the 16th. Having found probable cause to support the pending petition, or the minor having been determined delinquent or in violation of probation slash conduct agreement, the court finds, by a preponderance of the evidence, that detention or placement outside the home of a parent or guardian is necessary to protect the minor or others. It is ordered that the minor is committed to the custody of Division of Juvenile Justice for detention in a locked or secure facility, such as Firewood Residential Center for Troubled Youth. DJJ has discretion to release a minor without further court order. The above is supported by the oral findings entered on record and contained in the clerk notes, or as otherwise noted below. Mm -hmm. Effective date on the 18th, two days later. The judges. Okay. Nothing we didn't already know. Shit. Shit, shit, shit. Eddie's coming up the stairs. What do I do? What do I do? We need more. Stole him. No shit, Sherlock. Tell him you need to talk in his office. Can we finish looking at everything? I don't know. Audio recording. Dallas Crossing Police Department. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Uh, hello, I can hear you. It, it's my mom. She she fell in the water and she's not coming up. Okay, where are you now? Home. Where? Home. Are you alone? Where's your dad? It's just me and my sister. All right, honey, can you give me your address? Tw 12 Cannery Road. Please, hurry. Just stay right where you are, okay? We're sending someone out to help you. Don't hang up! He did anyway? Oh my god. Dello's Crossing Police Department. No, 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 no. Dello's Crossing Stop. Police Department. I don't want to get out of the screen because I think we Hello? might get called away. Hello, I can hear you. Autopsy report. We got this. We got this. Crime report. This is the first one that we read. Oh, come on, man. We need more keywords. Marianne recording. Ronan Children recording. Eddie Brown recording. Too many documents, because he's in every one of them. Eddie Brown... Wait, these two are different colors. Did I read this one already? This is the first one, right? Is it not? Let me try every combination here. Bingo. Wait, what? Got something. Facts report Ronan Children, Eddie Brown. Here. January 31st. What? That's before the incident. 01 com EBR. Hmm. References 0501 COM EBR. Okay, here it is. Sorry. Unbelievable. Allie, Tessa called fucking social services on us. And Eddie went along with it. What? Where are you? What's going on? Well, I'm not surprised because Tessa probably saw that Marianne was having trouble taking care of us. We didn't even have money for medicine for $21, okay? And then that might be related to why Eddie was there. They might have wanted to take us away from her. Do we have more we want to look at? How much time we got? Child services. Ronan children. Marianne. Eddie Brown. Bingo. This is Officer Eddie Brown. 
Hello, Officer Brown. This is Simone Prue from the Office of Child Services. Hello, Mrs. Prue. I'm calling about the Ronin family. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that we will be moving forward with the case. Ah, uh, I see. Is there anyone additional we should interview while we're in the area? Yeah, uh, Samuel Kansky is a close friend of the family. Uh-huh. K-A-N-S... K-Y. Great. Your caseworker, Sandy Black, will be arriving on March 5th. She'll drop by the station first thing in the morning. Mrs. Prue, how worried should we be? Mm, I really can't say until I have a full picture of the situation. Of course. Well, have a good afternoon, Mrs. Prue. You too, sir. I just listened to Brown chatting with OCS. He really did it. He reported her. What if he was just a go-between? He might not have had a choice. We need to keep digging. Why is the last update date so recent? What? Hmm. Okay, okay. These are new words. Child services recording. Sam Kansky. Marianne Ronan. Ronan children. Sam Kansky. DUI. Uh huh. Is that relevant to us? I don't think so. Complaint. L. Kansky. Okay. I need to check out 2014 203 2014 203 Here we go. Hmm. Nothing helpful. So in 2014. Trespassing, public intoxication. July 7th. Laura Kansky. Is that Sam's mom? But judging by the date of birth, seems more like a sister. Wait, what? Sam Kansky and Laura Kansky were born three months apart. So they can't be siblings. Cousins? Or maybe it's his wife. She married him and took his name. On July 7th, 2014, at approximately 11 p.m., we received a call reporting a suspicious person or persons near the Laura Kansky property at 1010 Lincoln Avenue. I arrived at the address at approximately 2320 and met with Mrs. Kansky. According to Mrs. Kansky's statement, she was woken around 11 p.m. by sound she first took for a bear. And it turns out it was a bear, Sam. <laughs> she armed herself with a Smith & Wesson 500, found at the property, and registered to Mrs. Kansky. She went outside and discharged one round into the air to threaten the animal. She then noticed human footprints in the snow, leading from the street to her backyard. She moved back into the house, locked the door, and immediately dialed 911. I invited Mrs. Kansky to remain in my squad car while I searched the premises. I approached the backyard from the southwest side of the house and moved toward a shed, 20 feet from the house. At that time, I heard the sound of glass breaking and drew my service pistol. The shed door was open and the light was on, but I confirmed there was no one inside. I rounded the side of the shed and found Samuel Kansky seated in a folding lawn chair. There were multiple beer bottles at his feet and Mr. Kansky was behaving in a manner that suggested intoxication. Kansky stated, I always knew Crazy D would get me in the end. He began laughing and reached for something under his chair. Suspecting Mr. Kansky may have a concealed weapon, I requested Mr. Kansky refrain from further motion. Kansky then stated, Shit D, I just wanted to drink a beer with you. I had Mr. Kansky stand and confirmed a cardboard carrier containing one bottle of unopened beer was under the chair. I instructed Mr. Kansky to return home, but he said he was already home. Kansky was referring to the home of Laura Kansky as his own though he is no longer a legal resident of 1010 Lincoln Avenue. Ah, so he used to live there, but not anymore. Ex-husband? I reminded Kansky that his home was on the lake, and he eventually agreed to an escort. On learning that it was her former husband, Mrs. Kansky declined to press charges. She also stated that it was the anniversary of the finalization of their divorce. I performed a sweep of Mrs. Kansky's house and premises 
to confirm there were no other suspicious persons. Leaving her there, I drove Mr. Kansky back to his boat at the address. Before we arrived, Mr. Kansky became unconscious and remained in the back of my service vehicle until Police Chief Edward Brown arrived and helped me carry him inside his boat. Okay, so he got drunk, he went to his ex-wife, his ex-wife got freaked out and called the police, and then he left. Not quite what we need, probably. Come on. There was something about complaints, right? Look for that. Incident? Child service? Already seen this one. Oh, this says we've already seen it. What about this one? Ah, uh, DUI. Oh. oh, okay, so whichever one we highlight and back out on, that's the one that we look for. Hmm. References 2014, 2014, 2014, 2014, 2014, 2014, 2014, November 16. Reported person, Sam A. Kansky. On patrol, I observed a light blue car perform a rolling stop through the stop sign at Cullen Boulevard and Montrose Avenue. I gave pursuit and ordered the assailant to pull over. As I gave the order, the vehicle accelerated, reaching 78 miles per hour. I pursued the vehicle as it rounded the cannery facility. The vehicle jumped the curb into the parking lot of the Gastineau Shopping Center. And then the driver's side door opened while the vehicle was still in motion. The driver jumped out and began running away. I parked my car and gave pursuit on foot. And it's Mr. Kansky. He had bloodshot eyes and a ruddy complexion. Alcoholic odor. Refused to cooperate with a breath test. Old Sam don't put his lips on nothing that doesn't have beer at the bottom. Kansky was transported to the Dallas precinct without further incident. DUI. Running away. You would have thought the whole time he was pursuing Marianne, he would be single. But it seems like he was actually married. And then now Marianne's dead. His ex-wife is probably not talking to him. Things, right? Look for that. So I haven't read this one yet then, huh? Because there's no question or a check mark. Okay. Need to check out 05 R61 889. 05 R61? Okay, here it is. By the way, out of curiosity, what is the objective right now? Search the archive? Well, because we put this one off, we got a bunch of other not as relevant information too, which might have been a good thing. Marianne. Okay, lots of details. 41. Unemployed. On dock at Lakeside, victim threatened her child with a gun. Child stabbed her with a pair of scissors. Victim subsequently fell into the lake. There were two officers, Brown and Holt. There were other involved people, Tyler and Allison. There's evidence of the shotgun. Owned by Samuel A. Kansky. The shotgun she was holding is Sam's. Not surprising. <sighs> Man, shouldn't police reports be straight and to the point? On March 1st at around 10 p.m., Marianne Ronan exited her home and entered her garage to start loading a shotgun. Shortly after, her child Enter the garage to display a new haircut given my sister. According to Tyler, when she saw the child's haircut, Marianne became enraged and threatened Tyler with a shotgun. Tyler fled the garage toward the lake, calling for help. Marianne followed, still armed. 
out onto the dock on the southern side of the property. Hearing the noise, Allison also came out of the house toward the dock, where she saw Tyler being threatened. And they defend themselves by stabbing Mother with a pair of scissors. At that time, both witnesses state that Marianne Ronan lost consciousness and fell into the lake. Uh-huh. And then Tyler called 911, which we heard. Then the police came here. And then they took us in, took our statements. And then Holt and Brown came over later on. Just some notes. Detectives observed a loaded Rassler shotgun on the dock. No rounds had been discharged. They directed forensic personnel to recover items. But I thought there was a shot heard in the barn. Oh. Allison Ronan stated that she heard screaming while she was upstairs in her bedroom. She ran down the stairs and looked over the kitchen window and saw her sibling and her mother, Marianne, on the docks. Marianne was threatening her child with a gun. Tyler tried to run away, but Marianne threatened that she was going to shoot. According to both witnesses, she stated, I'm going to kill you. She did say that, according to their memories. Redacted Ronan then stabbed Marianne with the scissors, trying to escape. So officially in the thing, it says Tyler. Marianne then fell in the water, unconscious. That's still in the realm of information that we already knew. something about complaints, right? Look for that. Got something. Here. Incident report. Bingo. Oh, 2005. Tessa Vecchi theft report and child neglect report. Hmm. References 2005-201546. 2005. 2015 2005 This one Here we go What the hell? Tessa accused her of child neglect. Even though she was helping us so much. Hmm. Well, let's keep reading. Theft, shoplifting. Person reporting Tessa Vecchi. Person reported Marianne Ronan. Date of action, January 31st. On January 31st, 2005, at approximately 10.50, 10.45, Marianne Ronan entered Veni Vetti Vecchi, owned by Thomas and Tessa Vecchi. Mrs. Vecchi stated that she observed Ronan browse the aisles for approximately 10 minutes while chatting distractedly with her. Mrs. Vecchi stated that she was behind the cash register and did not have a direct eye contact on Ronan at all times. Vecchi stated that after those 10 minutes, Ronan asked Vecchi if she had any organic mosquito incense in stock. Vecchi informed Ronan that she did not, but stated she believed this demand was odd due to the winter season. Ronan then left without purchasing anything else. Vecchi stated that approximately after 5 minutes, she walked back through the aisle where Ronan had been around and discovered a missing box of detergent. Vecchi states that she had very recently restocked the shelves and no one else had been in the store that morning. Vecchi stated that she had suspected Ronan of shoplifting before in the past, notably while in the company and possibly with the aid of Ronan's two children. Vecchi stated that she also had reason to suspect Ronan to be guilty of child neglect. They don't eat and are exposed to all kinds of inappropriate influences. Vecchi believed it is possible some form of abuse might be occurring in the home. Would she be wrong though, judging by how we've been remembering our mother? But we got help from Tessa before. You know, in her little notebook and all. But then sometimes we steal. I need to get moving. Shit. I'm sorry, Tyler. I couldn't stop him. He's coming your way. Get out. Uncle, I... 
We didn't mean I'm to- I'm not gonna repeat myself. You're a goddamn hypocrite. I said move it! Hey! Get off me! You'd rather spend the night here? Come on! I said don't fucking touch me! Go on! And consider yourselves lucky your family! Okay, if we talk in private, obviously that's ideal, but Eddie... We could use everyone watching to pressure him into talking too. Okay, let's talk in private, okay? Because if we don't, I'm gonna expose you. You're right. Family. And for Allison's sake, we should talk. About what? We saw our file. We know about social services. Why? Why did you turn your back on her? Why did Tessa? Before they were helping us. But then at some point, Tessa decided to report us instead. Okay. Yeah, you're right. We need to talk. 